Hi Crypto Devs, Liarco here, and in this video about the ERC721 collection project from the Ashlips lab, we are gonna go through the smart contract project structure so we can understand the purpose of any file you can find there. Let's get into it. Here is our project folder. The GitHub folder contains some actions in order to run automated tasks each time we make some changes to the code. This way we can ensure that tests always pass and the minting dab can be built fine on any operating system, every single time we make some changes to the code. The VS Code folder simply contains some default settings for the IDE, so all the extensions will work properly without any manual tweak. Then we have the minting dab and the smart contract folders. In this video we are gonna focus on the smart contract. This folder contains a hard hat project. Hard Hat is a framework for building smart contracts. It comes packed with great tools in order to write, test and manage smart contracts in a smart way. So the project structure is based pretty much on their default project. Let's open all the folders here. So inside the config folder we find all the configuration files that you can change in order to tweak any parameter. In most cases, these files contain 99% of the stuff you will have to change in the smart contract folder. The contract folder contains the Solidity code. Here we have one single contract file for the ERC721 collection, and you should be able to run normal collections without even changing it. The only section that I want to cover here is the withdraw function. Because these lines here contain a split payment code that sends 5% of the initial sale to the Ashlips lab. This helps us maintaining the project and creating educational content like this video. We really appreciate if you decide to support us, but you are free to lower the value or even remove these lines completely. Next is the lib folder. This folder contains some useful TypeScript modules and interfaces that create an abstraction layer in order to make it easier to deal with different contracts, networks and marketplaces. You should rarely need to change anything here. The scripts folder contains some art add scripts that can be run from the terminal. You can see these as shortcuts for common management actions on the collection contract. For example, opening a whitelist sale consists in up to 4 transactions that you might have to run in order to complete the operation. Updating the sale price, updating the maximum mint amount per transaction, updating the Merkle tree root hash, and enabling the whitelist sale. Running this script using the CLI makes it super easy to do everything with a single command and avoiding human errors. Last but not least, we have the tests folder. This folder contains code that can be run in order to verify that a contract is behaving as expected, even after you made some changes. This also allows you to measure gas efficiency, as we are gonna see in one of the next videos. Out of the folders, we have some configuration files for external tools, and you can simply ignore most of them unless you already know their purpose. But there are three of them that require your attention. Package.json contains all the scripts that you can run in order to interact with the project. You can use this as a reference for the available commands. .env.example contains an example set of values that you can customize in order to set up your environment. In order to use the file, you have to copy it and rename it to .env. All the values in that file are extremely sensitive, so you must pay attention when dealing with it. Do not share it with anyone. Arthat.config.ts contains the Arthat configuration. You won't have to change anything here in most situations, but it might be interesting to read it in order to understand what can be customized in the system. So this is a general introduction to the smart contract folder structure. In the next video, we're gonna take a look at the minting dApp from the same point of view. And that's all for this video. Please remember guys, it's extremely important to understand what your code is doing since you're actually putting your private keys in there, okay? Right. So, as always, if you have any questions or anything you would like to see in the next videos, please let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and bye!